Hey guys, we're Ali and Gary with Roll With Us DMs, professional game masters with over 17 years of experience that also love to go on some side quests with our friends, which you can see here on our channel. Thank you for checking out our videos. If you haven't already, you should quest down to the subscription button and strike the notification bell so you never miss our content. Our links are in the description below. Consider becoming a channel member to access epic perks, including playing in one of our games. Now, on with the video! <laughs> hey guys, it's Allie with Roll With Us DMs. Today I'm going to take a short refocus and relax and create a party token. This is what I use for when I just kind of want to represent everyone on a map, or if I need a logo for something with all the different character images in one token. Uh, so this is how I go about doing it. I use three programs, one called Midjourney, which is an AI art that I normally get most of my generic NPC character art for. I'm going to use a website called remove.bg forward slash upload and a third website called photop.com. All of these websites are in the description below if you want to check them out. Um, so to get started, I will grab my images off of Midjourney or I'll have the uh, players send me their character art and I'm going to upload them to remove.bg forward slash upload. Uh, so for while I'm doing this in Midjourney, I open each of the pictures that I want as a separate tab on, I use Google Chrome, I'm sure you can do it with whichever browser you decide to use, but once I have them all um, in separate tabs, then I will go back and I will drag the picture from the site that I have it in up and over to remove. It will automatically remove the background for me. Sometimes you need to play around a little bit and erase, restore something that it didn't quite recognize as background. But once you have all of the art successfully removed, then you can download it to your computer. Here you'll see we lost his leg. That's okay because he's going to be in the back with all of the other characters in front. So I'm not concerned about him losing his leg in that, removing the background. Uh, now we'll go over to Photopea. I've decided to use um, this green cavern as the backdrop to their, uh, to their photo. I try to keep it simple. I try not to put too much into the background. And then sometimes you want to add a add couple of layers. Um, sometimes it doesn't. It gets a little finicky if you don't add layers in between. Sometimes you don't need to, but we'll just delete those later. And you're gonna put all of your images right into here. You'll see that the images are different sizes. That's okay. We will fix them once we get them all in. And I want my turtle to be in the back and I want him to be bigger. So I'm going to first place him where I want him in the cave. And I kind of want his head right below some of those stalactites. So I'm going to drag him down to the back um, on the right hand side. You'll see uh, me dragging him down. And I want my goblin in the front, so we're going to do him last. Now these two, the one elf and the human, I want to be relatively the same size. And I want them smaller than the turtle. So I'm going to choose the one that I want to edit. And, I, and as long as you keep the aspect ratio, it won't shrink them weirdly. It's an okay size, maybe. Uh, we may make her a little bit, yeah, a little bit smaller. All right, and then we will uh, 
work on him next. Again, making him a little bit smaller. Oh, too small. Too small. A little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. You just kind of have to play with this a little bit. Until you figure out exactly um, the ratios that you want between all of your players. There we go. That seems more appropriate. Um, now, with the human kind of looking down and to its left, I want to kind of have him looking down at the goblin. Pay attention to where all of your characters are looking in the photo. And then once you have that, then we can crop this down. And choose what part of the background you want to see. And now this is still going to be a little bit bigger than a lot of people want to have as tokens in things like Foundry and Roll20 and, and things like that. So we're going to export this uh, to a... Uh, either a PNG or a JPEG, um, even a WebP is fine. They don't work with everything, but... Once we get that party token made... Then we'll go to another website called Token Maker 2. And opening that up, we can decide how we want to do it. We can do the full square, have everything there, and then we can download it. Or we can choose one of the circle cutouts that will get rid of the background. And you can choose, you know, what color goes with your theme. And you'll see in the upper right hand corner what it's going to look like as the final. And then download it. So that was my refocus for the day. I used this party token as a group of adventurers in a blog I'm writing on rollwithusdms.com. It's sort of background knowledge from an NPC and it'll eventually go into game notes for two campaigns that I'm currently running that are both set in the same world. So if you're interested in checking that out, rollwithusdms.com. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content that you just saw, consider joining one of our games at startplaying.gaming forward slash roll with us DMs.